time for a fine time. Hello, party, people, it's your boy, Dre, and once again, just for fun, it's my boy, Vin. Floating in, all the way from the Manus Sanctuary, his wispy buddy. <laughs> oh, no. Are you, uh, are you the mana? What's the fairy's name? Is it just fairy? I almost called it's her the mana fairy. I think it'd be cool if it were the mana fairy, but no, it's just fairy. Capitalized it is. <laughs> oh yeah, where is Fairy? She went. Yeah, that's right. I e right. F a e r i e. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. I almost kind of like that spelling though. F a e r i e. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's very fairy e right. So you may you may as well. We are going to talk about Trials of Mana, and also we are going to talk about Trials of Mana. How's that sound? It sounds uh, you get uh, twice the amount of fun in one podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Two games for the price of one. So, yeah, we're going to be talking about the Super Famicom Now Switch original Trials of Mana that came out in 1995 and the 2020 remake that came out at the dawn of the Rona. I just remember being locked in our apartments, (laughs) respective apartments being like, Oh man, I'm glad we have this to play. It was weird, right? Didn't that come out like on right on top of like wasn't it Final Fantasy VII remake and that like yeah, at the same it, time? It was at that same time, like a month after like Animal Crossing New Horizons or something like that. So I mean, that's a time capsule <laughs> and Doom Eternal. <laughs> it was yeah. what, a, we, what a time, the Rona, everybody. Jeez. At least we were, it was a good time for video games, right? So we were entertained, but I mean, <laughs> oh, we, we, thank God we, for video games. Otherwise, we would have bored out of our goddamn way. <laughs> no, we, we played video games, all right. Jesus Christ. So here, a couple notes before we start here. Uh, we've been planning to do this episode for a long time, but with the announcement of Visions of Mana at last year's Game Awards, we figured it'd be best to get this out ASAP as to not interfere with our eventual post-game show for Visions of Mana, because let's be real, we're going we're gonna to do that. I mean, come on. I think that's uh, inevitable, yes. It, w- it would be really weird to do uh, Trials versus Trials after Visions. That would be <laughs> yeah, a little strange, I- yeah. <laughs> As soon as the announcement happened, I think I texted you the next day like, we got to do Trials of Mana like now. We have to in the next like few months. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) because we've been kicking around for a while, but now we're now we're finally here. Uh, We want to get ahead of Visions of Mana. And so also, (laughs) if you haven't played Trials of Mana before, do not worry because there will be no story spoilers in this podcast. You know, as a matter of fact, then I don't even think we're going to talk story at all really i mean unless you really want to because <laughs> but no it's not really necessary uh and that's for like a couple of reasons i mean like both versions really share the same story secondly uh we have plenty of other things to talk about and the story is actually among the least interesting aspects of, of this game anyway yeah we're just not like this isn't a story game you know, this isn't, you know, Final Fantasy Nine where we're going to get into this deep shit or whatever. No, it just if you've played Secret of Mana, do you really remember the story in that game? I bet you don't. Right. Like, and it doesn't matter. Right. That's what Trials of Mana is like as well. Um, <laughs> what? What's so funny? He's laughing. At you're folks. just uh, you're just traversing the world to do stuff. And then uh, Mana happens. <laughs> apparently. Yeah, <it's> just, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, it's, it's just a fun adventure. Right. Don't don't think about it too much because they didn't. <laughs> right? they sure did. like, nope. Yeah, there's no there's no need. Right. Not every game needs to be like that. And and Trials of Mana is not that type of game. But regardless, we won't be talking about story spoilers. There will be some unavoidable kind of like environmental or like or rather, I should say location and like scenario spoilers, which are unavoidable if we're going to be comparing the two games. We're going to try to leave names out of it the best we can. At the same time, we're not here to tell anybody what is a spoiler or what isn't, because I think that's wildly shitty. I hate when people do that to me. So I just wanted to say this up front. If you care about like some minor uh, location and scenario spoilers, you might get some here. But that's all there's going to be in this podcast.
what I wanted to do first here is something we don't usually do on the show, and we just kind of do want to do like the road to Trials of Mana because we shouldn't assume everyone knows everything about the Mana series, and I figured this context is important to why we wanted to talk about these games and compare them too. Yeah, because these games all build on top of each other, uh, whether it's mechanically or just the way they like to like do things. Yeah, they sure do. So I think it's just nice to know how we got here, basically. And and that'll that'll give everyone the context for enthusiasm of why we really enjoy these games and want to talk about them today. So let's start here. The Mana series, or Seiken Densetsu, as it's known in Japan, began on Game Boy in 1991, and that original Game Boy game came here as Final Fantasy Adventure. Now, I think you had this growing up. I did not have Final Fantasy Adventure. I didn't even know it was a mana game till way later. Yeah, I actually, so I did have Final Fantasy Adventure, but I didn't know it was a mana game at first. And uh, furthermore, when this initially had come out, it was actually like really hard to find. So there was like a random uh, reprint later on, uh, I think actually by maybe by Sunsoft for some reason. But uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was so like the, it was just a hard game to find. So like uh, I jumped on that reprint and uh, had a good old jolly time. Yeah, so that happened, and then a Super Nintendo sequel to Seiken Densetsu came out a couple years later, aptly titled Seiken Densetsu 2, and this game came to North America as Secret of Mana, which, of course, would go on to have tons of critical acclaim and maybe one of the most beloved SNES games. I think that's easily said, right? Oh, easy. Yeah, a lot of people have memories of this game, whether it's like the multiplayer or just like the aesthetics or just the, the action RPG shenanigans, right? Um, but can you imagine if this game were called Final Fantasy Adventure 2 over here? Uh, oh, I think God. that marketing <laughs> might have been a little uh, a little nebulous there. So I, I'm I glad don't they think they... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think that would have been good. Um, I, you know, I I didn't always like Seater of Mana, and sometimes I still don't today, but it's great regardless. It shines through its flaws. It's it's a really great game, even though it's not perfect. Yeah, it, 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 it's kind of built like ass, right? There's a lot of programming quirks. <laughs> I mean, like, this is one of the most formative games of my childhood, right? So people know me for, like, wispy, like, motifs and stuff like that, but it all stems from this game, right? And uh, it arguably factored into, like, my whole fascination with, like, nature and stuff like that as well. But, uh, yeah, let's just not pretend the game's perfect. It, it's It's got all sorts of wacky-ass things under the hood. Yeah, it's not flawless, but it it definitely has its place in history, and there's a reason why it's beloved. So, naturally, since Secret of Mana, or Seiken Densetsu 2, was such a worldwide success, a couple years later, Seiken Densetsu 3 appears on Super Famicom in Japan on September 30th, 1995. Notice this time I said Super Famicom and not Super Nintendo because famously, very, very famously, Seiken Densetsu 3 never left Japan. Whew. Let's not mince any words. Most famous like Japan only game maybe ever. Yeah, I would say so. Even more so than like a Mega Man and Base or something like that, because like we actually like heard rumblings of this game like in magazines like actually coming here, right? Yeah, I remember it was previewed in magazines as Secret of Mana 2. I don't know what magazine, maybe like a Game Pro or something. I remember seeing screenshots and it said that. So Yeah, I remember those two. I, I think maybe EGM. I'm not really 100% sure, but yeah, I, I saw that as well. But are, As an yeah. aside, are you surprised that like Seiken Densetsu 3 as it was never got like a PS1 port or some like, you know, like S late SNES RPGs like, you know, Tactics Ogre or like F Tales of Fantasia. Those had like PS1 versions. I'm surprised they didn't do that for Seiken Densetsu 3. It's weird, though, because they did a lot of other things, right? So, I mean, like, the, the Final Fantasy games got it. Like, Chrono Trigger got it with those uh, cutscenes and all that. So, it seemed like a bit of a missed opportunity, right? So, yeah, I'd say, like, to some degree, I'm surprised. But this game notoriously had a lot of text in it. So, maybe Square just thought it wasn't worth, like, the localization effort because they couldn't just, like, reuse a script or whatever, right? Yeah, so, but I mean, I'm talking, like, like, even in Japan, like, just coming out there on PS1. Like, we didn't get Tales... Did we get Tales of Fantasia PS1? I think we I did. Don't, um, I don't... No, I actually, so. we didn't. We didn't. Never mind. Um, But, like, yeah, but, like, you know, we got Tactics over. That's what we got, Tactics Yeah, the, Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, but, like, why not? I don't know. I just figured it would be a shoe in but I guess not. 
Yeah, I don't know. It's like uh, maybe they weren't really sh- confident in its sales or something like that. It's it's hard to say. It's almost kind of like driven by like some degree of like expectations of what's going to do well when or what's worth the port job. I I guess, but I I fucking guess, but I can't imagine at least like not two hundred thousand people on PS One in nineteen ninety six or whatever wouldn't have bought that in Japan. I feel like the let, al- happened. let alone here, but who knows? Um, yeah. If if Sony would have allowed it to come here, let's let's be real. <laughs> oh, God, oh God, that's another can of worms. <laughs> yeah, so, but um, so since Sagan Densetsu three never came out here, it had this like mythical like this forbidden fruit status. Like I said, I genuinely think but now maybe the answer is Mother three, but like before that, I think it's the most famous. Like we never got this game. It has to be. But, you know, fan translations did appear at the beginning of the 2000s. And I think that's how both of us originally played the Super Famicom game. Absolutely. Yeah, that's how I jumped on it in the year 2000. (laughs) (laughs) I think I did it in 2003 is when I is when I played it. Nice. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So anyway, years wore on. No word of release. Obviously, the Super Nintendo was dead at this point. So it's like, okay, oh, well, we're never getting it. That was until Square announced something for Switch in 2017 called Seiken Densetsu Collection, which was a repackaging of the first three Seiken Densetsu games, meaning, of course, Final Fantasy Adventure, Secret of Mana, and the mythical Seiken Densetsu 3. So we were like, hey, this is it. It, it has to come here. Here it is. Yes. This is finally <laughs> our chance to play it. You know, uh-huh. they can just translate this one game for the collection. The other two we already have. Mm-hmm. But guess what? It didn't come here. <laughs> yeah, womp womp. Yeah, 2017 came and went without any North American announcement. 2018 comes and goes without a whisper. And then I got to be honest, I gave up at that point. After 2018, I was like, you know what? It's just not going to happen They're, for whatever reason. They don't want to give this this game. Who knows why? Even in collection form where they just have to translate one game and this collection is done by M2, who are the best in the business. And they, <laughs> they are. <laughs> and it's just like, you know what? Fine. I guess we're never going to have it. And, it, you know, I thought the same thing because uh, it's not like the system had that many JRPGs at that time either. Right. So, I mean, like they, it could have, uh, you know, filled in a bit of a launch window gap. Right. With, by g- giving it to us. But, you know, we n- not a single word. And like in, in most games that Square was putting at the time, like they did come here in some form. So, right. So, I mean, it was especially jarring. <laughs> yeah. It was it was it was disappointing more than anything. Just the lack of acknowledgement. At least say, I mean, remember back in the day. At least, especially in the two thousands, they they would get asked. The American offices would get asked. And it's like, nah, we don't think we're gonna bring that here. Or like, yeah, you know, we might do that. Or you know, you get answers like that. Yeah. These days, it's more automatic. We just assume we're gonna get everything until like we don't. You know, we live in a much better era now. But back then it was kind of loosey goosey. Eh, we may not. We may do it. You know, no such word here. Total radio silence. And it was just like, OK, fine. But then the day came. The good day finally came. The beam of light. <laughs> the lucent beam. <laughs> the lucent beam came through the darkness. <laughs> so here's what happened and this is this honestly what i'm about to say might be one of the hypest things for me i had ever seen in like a nintendo direct personally yeah it's so crazy so during the e3 2019 nintendo direct this trailer starts and it quickly becomes clear that it's a mana tree that the first thing they show up, like, okay. I was like, huh? And then before I could even think, they show Duran, one of the six characters in Seiken Setsu 3. He's in full 3D modern graphics and shit. <laughs> and I was like, Man. wait, hold the fuck on. And before I could even think, Charlotte appears, the most unmistakable character design in the game. And I was like, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. shit. Oh, uh-huh. shit. This is really happening. They're remaking Seiken Setsu. Wait a second. Wait, it can't be called that here. It's not called Sagan and Setsu 3. What are they going to call it? What are they going to call yeah, it? Yeah, it's all something of mana. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, the voiceover goes, 
action RPG Trials of Mana is getting a global release on Nintendo Switch. And I was oh like, God. what? Trials of <laughs> Mana. It's such a good name for it, too. Yeah, <laughs> oh, it's a perfect name. That's exactly what the game is. And then the rest of the trailer plays out. And sure enough, there's that famous key art with the six characters and the blue clouds. Honestly, some of my favorite square art ever of all time it's great oh it's so iconic too it's so good and then the nude logo trials of mana in english i was like oh my fucking god (laughs) it's here i want you to tell me your perspective here because you're you're a bigger fan of this game than me so that was my reaction what did you think when it first the trailer first kicked on yeah so i had done a few more runs into it by this point so uh, i had a bit more familiarity with the soundtrack so i kind of came from from that angle and so like right when this trailer started it played a symphonic version of one of the main themes uh meridian child i was like wait a second like that's that's a familiar track like that can't be right so uh i can recognize that track from like a mile away and then so they also showed like the the iconic shot of like the tree with like the sword at like embedded at an angle and i was like wait a second man so (laughs) (laughs) it's very very specific iconography right so uh, at that point i was pretty convinced we're getting something related to sake of this se3 but i just didn't know exactly what i mean like so i was just blindsided by the whole way that was presented (laughs) It, it, it was it was so good and be and like okay and so here's the thing we're shell shocked from that right we're sitting there <laughs> days what the fuck again before it could have a chance to think another trailer immediately starts with the text the original three games in the mana series now on nintendo switch <laughs> and sure enough boom here's what now what is called for us collection of mana they yeah, it's did a fitting it. Name. It's a fitting name for sure. Cool. Right? <laughs> yeah. Final Fantasy Adventure, Secret of Mana and Trials of Mana. And it said with the additional text available for the first time out of Japan. And then at the end, available later today for your <laughs> Nintendo Switch. A fucking shadow drop. It happened. Everything happened at once. They announced a remake of a game that we never got. And then at immediately after, hey, here's the original one right now. What? We have, it's so crazy. We have to reiterate that we had total radio silence for two years, right? And then it's just to actually say collection of mana to actually like mention it as like a footnote like after a remake we're like what the hell is going on here man it's crazy i was a little bit scared at first i have to admit because there had been so many crappy mana projects over the years since like the (laughs) mid 90s that i was afraid that like trials of mana was going to be some like shitty mobile game or like some port to switch that i hadn't heard of or here's various (laughs) characters in the mana series in this game or something but then obviously the the trailer quickly revealed that it wasn't going to be that but it was just like yeah. I, you know i had my hours like okay i can't get too excited at first because you know <laughs> i mean like i can't blame you because my crazy ass had been still sort of keeping up with the series this whole time but like i mean in the late 2000s it was kind of impossible to because it was all mobile games uh there were names like a uh, rise of mana like circle of mana and like nobody knows what these are i don't even know what these are and uh so i mean trials is not too far apart on paper but yeah they they made it very clear very quickly which is great and uh yeah it's just, again i can't i can't reiterate enough like trials is such a good good title for this game it makes perfect sense <laughs> yeah it's a it's a great name for the game trials of mana we finally have a name and we finally got to well i mean again we played it in an unofficial capacity before but to have an actual official version real script and everything no no diss to whoever did the original like fan translation but you know you only did what you could back then right this right, is a real yeah. this is a real script and it's it's just fantastic i was just so happy Fine. So let's talk about the game somewhat. Let's do some basic information about Trials of Mana. And like I said earlier, we're going to use Secret of Mana as a base of comparison since, again, most people have played that. So we just kind of want to, you know, it, it's and the differences between the two games are interesting. So I just mm-hmm. thought they were good. They'd be good to highlight here. So I guess let's just start here. 
unlike Secret of Mana, where you have just the three characters, they're not really, I mean, I guess they have official names, but not really, right? It's the boy, the girl, and the sprite, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, nowadays, people will say some, like, Randy and stuff, but I mean, at the time, no, they didn't exist, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I will say Randy, too. I don't even remember the girl's name. Purim? <laughs> oh, that's fucking right. And I think uh, Popoy for the spray, I think. That Popoy, <laughs> Popoy for them, yeah. Yeah, um, but the Super Nintendo original didn't have anything like that. No. Um, anyway, unlike Secret of Mana, where you just have those three characters, boy, girl, sprite, in Trials <laughs> of Mana, <laughs> in Trials of Mana, you have six characters of which you can choose three of them to make your party for the game. So, Mm -hmm. and depending on who you choose as your main character, you can set on three different story paths throughout the game. So, one path is if you choose Duran or Angela as your main. Another happens if you choose Hawkeye or Reese. And a third path happens if you choose Kevin or Charlotte as your main. So, that's how the game is structured, basically. So, you pick your main. That's the main story. And then the other two are just supplemental to whatever you're doing. And it's really, really crazy just because there's such freedom and like few games at the time really did this as well. Right. So like to actually have like three separate paths like this was like it, it insanely transformative at the time. Um, These three paths actually have like different penultimate dungeons and like even different final bosses, which I can't even think of like another case that like does stuff like this. Can I, can I, okay, this is something that is always said about Trials of Mana, and I wanted to talk about it, because I don't think I've ever vocalized this. It's the last place you go to really a dungeon. I mean, because, I, with, again, without spoiling, I'm not gonna, even going to say the name of the place, but is that really a dungeon? I always felt like what we refer to as the penultimate dungeon is actually the final dungeon, <laughs> to me. <laughs> Let's be fair. I'm just saying this is a technicality. <laughs> I mean, but I'm just saying it so uh, uh, n- no one tears apart my uh, sort of sentence there. But yeah, it, like it's truly the final dungeon. Let, let's be frank. <laughs> to me, it is. To me, yeah, I, it, I, it you know, no, I, I, I agree. Know. I agree. No, I'm just being fiddly. <laughs> that's all. No. Yeah, no, I understand. It's always referred to it that way, and other people do too. But to me, I was yeah. like, like, I don't know. I feel like that was the final dungeon. But whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, yeah. I can't really, I can't really say why. I don't want to spoil. But yeah. Of of course. Um, yeah, but anyway, yeah, th- uh, six characters, three different story paths, different final boss. What game does that? Different three different final bosses. Get the fuck out of here. It's crazy. This, it's so crazy. This is a Super Nintendo game doing this shit, <laughs> man. With it's, its 32 mega, with its 32 <laughs> goddamn megabits. Double yeah. of Secret of, the th- double of Secret of Mana, by the way, which was 16. And I think that hurt Secret of Mana a lot because there's a lot of palette swap dungeons and shit and bosses. And, and oh my God, how many times do I have to fight the same boss? Now it's blue or green or something. Uh, that, thought, that annoyed I, that annoyed the shit out of me in, in Secret of Mana. And look, you had to do palette swapping back then to a degree. Secret of Mana took it to such an extreme that I, even me at the time, as a, I don't know, whenever that game came out, I, I was a tween, right? I, I was just like, this is, I've seen this five times already, this castle. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say. I thought the temples pissed you off more than the uh, bosses, from my recollection. <laughs> no, every all of it. The, the the bosses pissed me off too. It's just like, oh my god, I have to fight like, and the bosses come out of nowhere. Sometimes they just like they happen. Do. <laughs> it's just like, okay, I guess I'm fighting like horse riding or like motorcycle riding guy again or whatever. Or, like, yeah, I think you fight him like three times or something. It's a lot. <laughs> it's just like okay already. Anyway, Trials of Mana has a lot more bespoke bosses. And stuff like that. There's very little of that stuff going on. Of course, some of the enemies are palette swap, but that's natural. That's that's fine. But yeah, but they really put that double the space to good use. <laughs> it's, it's like the joke. I'm sorry to beat a dead horse. It's like the joke that we all say, though. It's uh, you can tell it was on 16 megabits. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you fucking could. Um, 
The, the, oh, um, a lot of the combat quirks from Secret of Mana are gone. There's no more percentage counter. Remember in Secret of Mana, you had to slash, and then it counts up to 100%. Dink, and then you could slash again. Otherwise, you'll do dick for damage. That's yeah, gone. Yeah, you gotta wait. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like you still have to wait in Trials of Mana, but it's like hidden. There's no penalty if you just press the button, which is weird. But I guess we'll get to that later. There's no more charging up attacks. Oh my, my axe is level four. <laughs> Let me go <laughs> forever, and then like, and then you miss, and then you fucking miss, <laughs> and then you fucking miss. <laughs> and then you fucking miss so like yeah so no more of that the ring system was retained i thought that was like the smartest thing they did honestly yeah, it's iconic to mana yeah yeah they, at that point you know there had only been two mana games and only one with the ring system i, I th- i'm glad they realized that hey that's something that worked the last time that we should really keep yeah it works yeah especially with multiple characters on screen it's great yeah um, you have like class ups as you level up, you can change your class. So there's a lot of different stuff. And as we said earlier, the script is the same between the original and remake of Trails of Mana. So the literally the exact same. And to me, I think that's part of the reason why they even like made like the original and the remake happen over here, like in the first place, because you could essentially get two projects for the price of one script. Right. Like it makes perfect sense. Right? Yeah. I mean, and also they now we realize they were hanging on to collection of mana because they were making this remake. So this is probably in the cards the whole time. They wanted to do this, be like, OK, when we announce the remake of Trials of Mana, we'll give them a collection of mana. So they did it for they held back on us for a marketing decision at the same time. Good fucking God, man. Like <laughs> just waiting all that time with like nothing for two years was just it was excruciating. It sucked. It really yeah, did. It, it was a lot, but I guess that's how the business goes. <laughs> yep. Let's just say some things we like before we get into the comparisons. Let's say some things we blanketly like about Trials of Mana. But before we do that, I wanted to ask you, like, you are an artist because of Mana, right? Let's not mince any word. Like, that is the truth, right? Like, the Secret of Mana just put you on a path that was like... It absolutely did, right? So, I mean, p- people may know that I love, like, nature and rainbowy things. And I think a lot of that is informed by the sort of uh, multiple elementals, like, in in, in in Mana. Even in, like, fourth grade or whatever, I uh, when I did a replay of Secret of Mana, I uh, actually <laughs> slapped a plastic bag on my wrist and pretended it was Wisp. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, okay. Uh, I have several questions. Uh, so you, you, so did you put eyes on the plastic bag? Like, yeah, did yeah, you just like, your eyes on it. Yeah. Oh my god, you really did. Did you give it a voice? Did it talk? Like, did it? No, it wasn't that. That wasn't that. Like, uh, fleshed out by that point. Nowadays, it would, but back uh, as a wee lad, I don't think so. Okay. Did you do this at like you didn't do this at you did this at home right not like at school or no, some I was wild school. shit? No, I was at school. Oh no! I, was no. At school. <laughs> I remember I was in the library. Yeah, with this bag of my hand. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> That's bullying central. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, it was fine. No, no, give you a hard time. Don't even question it. It's fine. <laughs> oh, I bet they were like, "Okay, we're just staying away from him." <laughs> uh, that's yeah, that was that's, great. That was great. Man, that's that's good. I did not know that about you. Holy shit, that's that's uh, pretty good. You yep, kept it in the bag, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Um, can we put it real simply, basically, because we it's obvious that we love this game, but yeah. just in a real simple way, could you tell me why it, this is our favorite mana game or more pointedly, why Trials of Mana is way better than Secret of Mana? Well, that's because your teammates in Secret of Mana get caught on random shit. Wait, what? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> oh, I, oh, God. I could do a whole podcast on stupid Secret of Mana shit that pisses me off. Oh, you mean you don't like infinite hit stun from a wolfman? <laughs> it was great, man. Uh, not oh, so great. My God. But um, anyway, uh, to answer your question, I'd say the journey is extremely well defined and the, the characters' personalities are bold, distinct, and memorable. Like, uh, you're, you're never going to forget any six characters, 
right? I mean, as evidenced by the fact that you could still remember Duran and Charlotte, right? And uh, even though it's like 90s, like JRPG tropes out the wazoo, like there's a lot of love put into this general scenario. The, like the way the characters interact, it's just extremely distinct, right? So like uh, sometimes they bicker and other times they like get along. And it's like, that's actually like really memorable to me. And that's a, a lot more interesting than like the cardboard cutouts and like Secret of Mana. 100% agree. And it's just a fully realized version, a more fully realized version of Secret of Mana. You know, yeah. I, it's a it, Trials of Mana is also a very different game, particularly in terms of like combat and story and stuff. But the thing I love the most about Trials of Mana is that the scenario and game flow are like pretty much perfect. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Pitch perfect. We talk about that like pacing a lot in JRPGs or whatever. Trials of Mana works, even though the story isn't great and worth talking about that much. It doesn't really matter. The The pacing of it and the flow of it is perfect. Yes. Note for note. Find the eight elementals, beat the eight Benevidons, do this or that. It's over. It's really tight and concise in exactly what it should be. All, all killer, no filler, as the kids yeah. might say in the 90s. <laughs> I, I agree. Yeah, there's no waste of time with this game. And like, uh, I mean... A, a lot of Square games were pretty good in general, but this really is on point, and, and it, it was great. Did you expect the remake to be good? Like, I mean, I know, with the like, you know, we saw the character models when they first showed in the trailer. It's like, oh, shit, they look amazing. But did you expect this to be good because there had been so many bad mana games? No. To answer your question, I didn't have the biggest expectations, but how could anyone build expectations given those two games? Uh, you know when the last good mana game was? Trials of Mana in 1995. <laughs> so, like, yeah, I mean, the last great one. There's been some here or there that have been kind of interesting. Some people say they like Children of Mana, I guess, and whatever, it's I guess. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the, if that's, the best you, that's the best you can say about a mana game in the last almost 30 years, then... You know, that's why we hopefully Visions of Mana delivers. But that's another topic. Yes. Fine time. Fine time. Fine time. We're going to start comparing and contrasting these two versions of Trials of Mana, original and remake. But they are completely different games in feel, design, etc., you know, execution. And you should play them both. There's not going to be a winner in that regard. Like, which one should you play? Play them both. That's that's our answer. But yeah. we're just gonna pit we're just gonna pit them against each other anyway, because podcast content, right? We gotta we gotta do it. <laughs> <laughs> a little comparing contrast never hurt nobody on the airwaves. <laughs> nope. <laughs> All right, let's start with like the graphics and general art. I always think that's the the best place to start because you eat with your eyes first, of course. And Mm -hmm. by the way, we both played the remake um, when it came out on PS4. And for this particular podcast, we played it backwards compatible on PS5. So we cannot speak to any other version of the game, particularly Switch. So if you're (laughs) playing that version, God help you. Don't know what to tell you. I think we're on the grapevine is that that version is oops all 30 frames a second. But uh, if it even hits that, but I don't really have any firsthand experience. So I don't know. I I ain't finding out, dog. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just talk about the sprite art on SNES because, in my opinion, Vin, it's – I'm not going to mince words. It's the best on the system. It is. It's, e- it's easily the best on the system, and, like, the environments really feel like they're they're alive. And there's tons of foliage and decorative details and stuff like that, right? And uh, in stark contrast to Secret of Mana, um, again, it's, as we've said, like, a lot of it is boutique areas. Like, um, nope, not – palette swapped like palaces or anything like that and it was always incredibly impressive how unique everything felt and uh i was actually that guy uh in 2000 i made like desktop backgrounds out of some of the areas oh my god okay oh like taking stitching together like the screens or whatever like (laughs) yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) you know i've never tried to do that honestly I, i imagine it couldn't be too hard but still no, it wasn't too bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But still, that's like that's pretty wild. I didn't know you did. You probably told me you did that and I forgot. And it's been so long in the um, mid 2000s. probably. <laughs> as yeah, just artistically, 
it's insane. Like as we get into the late SNES era, we start to see some really peak 2D. You know, obviously everyone's mind goes to like Chrono Trigger as they should. Yoshi's Island, obviously, as they should. Yep. But of course. for me, Trials of Mana is the one that always comes to mind first. It's that perfectly idealized, best looking SNES game. Like, you know, almost like. I know this might sound kind of rude, but you know how like sometimes you see on social media, people do like, here's my 16 bit art or something. And oh, it's like this very, oh. it's like this very like overstuffed thing that could never actually be on like a real they system because you can't have that much stuff. No. Oh, but man. like, I think trials of mana damn near looks like that without trying basically is what I'm saying. Like it, it really so looks good. that good. I love the original's look a lot. And there's a there was a certain type of person back in the day. Tell tell me if you can help me with this, and I'm pretty sure yeah. you can. There was a certain <laughs> type of person who would claim that 2D graphics are better than 3D because they were quote unquote hand drawn. That was always the thing you heard, hand drawn, right? Yeah. This was something I've always dismissed as them not willing to let go and look at something new. That's what I always took them saying that as they, they, they also never took stuff into account like camera perspective or whatever problems you have in 3d. Right. But that, that's not the point. Point being at the risk of sounding like one of those guys, the background craft in the original trials of mana is absolutely insane. Every background is crazy those beach areas they look straight out of a painting seriously they do yeah like with the craggy rocks like jutting out and they have that like perfect water view right yeah yeah the volcano area has this like wild lava effect that Mm -hmm. doesn't do like the typical wavy heat overlay thing which is fine i don't mind that effect but it has this like lava effect that looks smoldering Maybe lava shouldn't be smoldering, but it definitely does look like it in this in this game. It looks alive, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it really, really does. It has that sort of like uh, poignant sort of effects going on. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. The loop of it is really seamless, and it looks it looks incredible. Yeah. Um, Mount Laurent, the way you know that that when you get to the peak and you look out over the land and the ocean, when you get to that one peak. Yeah. Um, Jesus Christ. I mean, what can I say? It's um, picturesque. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't, I mean, just like, I can't think of any other game on Super Nintendo that has stuff like that. And then, of course, you know, that pile pile on all the Squaresoft SNES spell effects and, you know, all that typical shit, you know, with the, oh, uh, used haste. So here's a clock and like a weird dimension thing or whatever, like that type of shit, all that typical Squaresoft shit on top of the art. Magic, pure magic. Yeah, it really was. It, it really takes uh, the sort of capabilities of the system and pushes them to like the limit, right? And uh, there's all the effects have a nice sort of uh, um, how I put it. Um, there's like there's like scaling effects. There's like semi transparency, like all the works, and it just it really takes all that score had learned up to that point and just like melds it together and then some. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think we said all we can about the graphics. I really like yeah. the older character designs too, the character sprites, because like I love their walk cycles. Kevin is like stomping everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's his weird. legs are super high up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm a beast. <laughs> I'm like stomping around. I love that one. Um I love the battle stance of Hawkeye. He's holding one dagger high and one dagger low. He has that like perfect like anime like um, I think you know what I'm trying to say. I don't even know a yeah. comparison to it. Blade, blade dancer. You think of like a blade dancer style in any given thing, right? That yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And when he I attacks, kinda... he looks like he's moving, like he's dancing too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That whirling, twirling kind of thing. I, yeah. I love mm-hmm. it. Almost yeah. like if if uh, Rashid from Street Fighter Five or Six had like knives or something like that. That kind of like, oh, <laughs> you know that what would I mean? Be amazing. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, that'd be great. He should have knives. Why don't? Why doesn't he have knives? Hmm. Hashtag give Rashid knives. <laughs> he would be too overpowered if he had knives, but he that's would why. be. He would be. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So I got to say this, and I don't know how you'll feel about this, but as we said, the character designs were unmistakable and striking when we first saw that trailer before we even knew it was called Trials of Man or anything. It was like, yeah. oh shit, that's Duran. And the reason why I was so excited is because it looked so good. 
in terms of character design, I really do think the remake is one of the best conversions of 2D to 3D ever in terms of yeah. like character design. I would definitely say that, especially just because it captures like the silhouette and like the, the sort of personality of, if, as you the sort of personality of those original designs. But it, so not only does it honor those, but it like adds on top of that. There's decorative details that 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 don't detract. They just add to the original designs. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, um, and yeah, I, I just I always just like those touches and they, they didn't really they didn't add anything that was like unnecessary, so to speak. Yeah, they didn't try to like modernize them or, you know, I hate I hate that term nowadays because it always mean it usually means something bad. It doesn't always have to be. But to me, it like it can have a negative connotation in terms of character design, because it's yeah. like the character is the character. They're from the time that they're from. And to try to modernize them means making something else. Now, sometimes that can still be good. But Trials of Mana didn't attempt to do that. They're just like, we're going to take the art and pop this into 3D exactly, and they did exactly that. All the other details are there. Like, the the NPCs are spot on, too. Like, the yeah. dancing shopkeepers are there. <laughs> um, you know those burly guys with, like, the chest hair that has, like, that perfectly triangular, like, Zangief, like chest hair you know what i mean like sometimes sailors yeah. at the port or something the sailors got them the sailors do yeah Th- that's a yeah that's like a very 2d type of like touch to do to a character but it works in 3d they kept it it was like okay that actually doesn't look stupid <laughs> yeah but those are those are the kinds of details that would get lost in 3d but trials of mana does everything they really gave a shit whoever worked on this gave a shit they they, they really put a lot of love into like really recreating everything and keeping the spirit intact and this level of care just hadn't been present in mana games for such a long time like the entirety of the 2000s were just full of like half-assed efforts so it almost feels like forget Uh, about those altogether yeah i mean like i hate to take my mind all the way back to stuff like dawn of mana and shit which is just like terrible but like yeah i just (laughs) your favorite physics you mean the worst physics of all time like (laughs) but yeah i I just love everything and there's something else i don't want to take for granted either and it's how fantastic the enemy designs came over from to remake as well yes because not every rpg has this because like even great games like i love octopath traveler right the Mm day-to-day enemies roaming around they're not really that memorable like some of them are but some of them aren't and that's fine not every game has to be dragon quest right (laughs) well it's hard to beat that yeah (laughs) well yeah but like but trials of mana has crazy good enemy designs and the way they look in remake are spot fucking on whether a a rabbi mushroom the um goblin is my favorite the guys with the little mask and whatever oh yeah yeah the axe guys yeah the death animations are incredible too they have all the animations those are so distinctive from secret of mana and trials of mana it's like okay Mm -hmm. when you kill the goblin it turns into a pile of bones or something yeah that's that's still yeah yeah, that still happens in trials of mana still happens or when you kill like one of the slimes a little we like the the (laughs) drops just kind of go like but that that still happens all that stuff was retained they understood how important it was and they got it right in 3d that is not easy and i i wanted to say how good that was yeah and like man has has a lot of fun whimsical enemy designs like that and some of these carry across like you know every single game and like uh some of those asajin like the fish people like little tridents those will stand out to me and uh that's great petite man. poseidon one of the yeah, 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 petite <laughs> poseidon yeah i'm just like uh, okay oh, okay man. whatever man whatever <laughs> what what about evil ninja it's a it's a ninja what? but it's evil <laughs> i love how they're like literally called that oh i'm so dumb i don't know why they're like evil but evil I mean, ninja <laughs> not just any ninja apparently you need to know the ninja is evil <laughs> <laughs> i think it's just the word evil if it were called like dark ninja or something i don't think i would have like thought anything about it but evil ninja is just like <laughs> it's, it's, it's the 90s man it's just, it's feel like they just get away with whatever slapping on whatever they want in there <laughs> yeah um all right. Uh, any anything else about graphics before we get to which one we we prefer? Rather, I would like to say. 
say one little thing, and that's uh, there are little touches that really bring scenes to life. Uh, for example, Justin Durant's opening in the remake, his aunt passes him his father's sword. You actually see the literal sword in that scene, but in the original game, uh, it's just a text box, but um, which is fine for a super uh, Super Nintendo game, but actually be able to see like that sort of uh, like prop work and that I guess you could say cinematography. It's that in the remake. That's great. That's fantastic. I love seeing that stuff. Does it just do the thing where he just gets it out of a chest or something on SNES? Or does it just like I he, think he, or she quote unquote hands it to him like and uh, you I, got the sword? I think she just has her neutral pose. Yeah, I think it just does. Yeah, it. right, right. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, um, that's that's interesting. That's a that's a t- see, you've played these games several more times than I have. So you yeah. you probably pick up on something like that. Um, yeah. But yeah, which which one do you prefer? Presuming you have a preference, because for me, I'll, I'll just put it simply. We're talking peak 2D graphics versus a fairly average looking PS4 game. You know, <laughs> like, yes, the character designs are incredible and enemy designs, but like environmentally, it's still a PS4 game from the year of our Lord 2020. So, <laughs> you know, I, I original wins for me or yeah, original wins for me, but. You mean Charles of Mana remake is not going to outshine Final Fantasy VII remake? <laughs> uh, no, not quite. I mean, I think you can see the vast gulf in budget there, but you know, hey, what what can I say? <laughs> I think, yeah, there might be a slight gulf in there. <laughs> and uh, to, to answer your question, though, I think you put it pretty well. Uh, it's really like what you just say. It's like it's hard to really beat like Square at the peak of their like two D Super Nintendo game. There's also some really interesting expressive sprites, and you just don't see that level of ex- character expression for remake like all the time necessarily. And uh, just on a pure consistency level, like the original game, like has these sprites that really jive with the backgrounds, and they all fit together. They all mesh together. <laughs> Whereas, like in remake, like if you look at like any given texture on the environment, you might be like, uh, "Well, I got my beautiful looking character, but there's like this low poly ass like texture on this surface." <laughs> Sixty at all costs, baby. (laughs) So I have to go with the original in this one. Fine time, fine time. Let's get more mechanical. Let's talk like level design, control, layouts, and stuff like that. Okay, any anything in that category, I'd like to tackle now. Mm-hmm. And I want to start with this and see if you agree. Original Trials of Mana feels weirdly segmented in terms of traversal. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because I I don't want to go as far as to say it's like the original Legend of Zelda where everything is literally like a single screen or something like that. (laughs) And you slide over and you get to the edge. You know, it's not like that, but it's definitely pretty controlled and pretty linear. Like this is not some sort of sprawling explorative adventure, you know, at all. I, I'm just trying to imagine uh, the 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 NES life applied to this game, and that would be pretty. Oh, uh, <laughs> this isn't. No, we don't have Trials of Mana. You don't. You don't try a game like this on eight bit. No, but but yeah, but but in contrast to that, the somewhat like hallway design of remake or path based design might feel restrictive under like normal circumstances, but as a translation of the original 2D game, I think it works. I also think it works really well. Uh, it, it also sort of uh, breaks down some of those boundaries and helps like the areas a few more organic on top of that, too. But yeah, just in terms of like sheer like path traversal. Yeah, I think it fits just fine. Yeah, I like how Remake occasionally strikes the right side on angles, the right 2D angles to look just mm-hmm. like original in some key yeah. moments. You, you see the part like when you go to Cascade Cavern the beginning of the game, it strikes this exact same camera angle as if you were looking at the original. Yeah, and I love is. that. I don't even think they did that as like a, oh, we want to, hey, kids, remember this? I think they just thought that was like, okay, that's like an iconic shot of the game. So we just kind of need to, it needs to look this way. It's part of the the shot just because um the, the way the waterfalls cascade in specific ways. Because if you, you're looking that in third person, uh, it, it would sort of like, pull away from the sort of intrigue because you're going to like this cavern or whatever. Right. So, uh, yeah, they, they thought it through again. They thought about all this stuff. 
Yeah, they really why did. they did. I think Wandara yeah. Woods does that too because that's largely a 2D section or whatever. I mean, of course, the original Trials of Man is 2D, but you know what I mean, like a single a single plane section, right? Yeah, largely. I almost, I, will, I almost thought Wandara Woods in like the original felt like almost like yeah, it was like on a almost like a belt scrolling game or something like that. But <laughs> Ninja Ninja Warriors, Ninja Warriors again. Right. Yeah. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And they they encapsulate that sort of like that sort of perspective in the remake, too. So it's, it's great. I want you to tell me about the glow up of the gnome village, because that shit was incredible. That actually blew me away. It, like it, oh, that was wow, a crazy so good. It, it was really good because in like the original game, it was relatively constrained. I think it was only like on a few screens or like whatever. But like in the remake, they again, they sort of break down some of these boundaries and sort of like blow things up. So you feel the scale. There's giant mushrooms like all around you. And like the, the environment feels really full and lived in, which is like not to knock the original, but like the original didn't really feel like the sort of uh, expansive area to like that degree. No, definitely not. And that's probably one thing that's weak about both games is that the towns generally are not that interesting. Yeah. But it, it, this, this gnome village is it's easily the most interesting place. Maybe what? Uh, what's that place in the woods? Uh, oh, um, Dior is my favorite uh, flowery place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's interesting, I guess. But like, yeah, the, most of the towns in this game aren't really that interesting. But that so when it when it is interesting, that does really stick out to me. Yeah. Speaking of flowers, this like this this village straight up just has like uh, flower fields in it. And it's like they just like crammed it, man. They crammed it with so much detail. <laughs> it's so cool. I got to give the edge to the original over the remake on Golden Road, though. There's something about Golden Road Road in the original that is incredible looking. It might actually be my favorite place in the game. It's super iconic, I think, and uh, it's not quite so uh, golden looking in the remake. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, it's it's not like it's look unless they wanted to go like full like Wizard of Oz, like Yellow Brick Road or something like that. Like unless they really wanted to bring that home, which honestly I wouldn't have minded. But, you know, (laughs) I don't I don't know. You suppose that was deliberate, though, right? The, the direct inspiration for that? Yeah, of course. It's yeah, it's, the, yeah. it's the fucking yellow brick road. Yeah, of course yeah, it yeah. is. <laughs> Literal road, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like, you know, not not as pristine as it is in, in uh, Wizard of Oz. <laughs> so remake, Trials of Mana remake has a mini map with like star markers telling you exactly who to talk to or where to go next to pro- mm-hmm. to to progress the game, which we affectionately or derisively, depending on the game, call triple A markers. They are they're <laughs> totally tri- totally triple A markers. <laughs> but honestly, in this game, it's fine with me because anyone's anyone who's familiar with old RPGs is used to like town situations, especially where they're like you have no idea who to talk to, and then they're like. Oh, so something or other isn't ready yet. Let's go hang around town. And then you have to remember, you have to figure out who, like, what three or four people they want you to talk to before they're like, hmm, this thing is ready that you're it's supposed so to finicky. do now. It's so finicky. Remake throws that all out the window because it's like, okay, here's the four star points of the people you need to talk to to progress it. So, like, honestly, I don't mind. I really don't. It doesn't detract from the experience to have those stars on top of the objective either, because like, honestly, in like in the original, if you got to talk to like very specific people, it, you're just kind of wasting some time at that point. And like one, there could be a point to be said about sort of like exploration and intrigue. But in this case, I don't think it really matters if you're like splunking in town because like there, there's not that much to do in town anyway. So it's like whatever at that point. And um, yeah, it's like we said, the yeah. towns aren't that interesting. So yeah. it's not like you're going to have fun like you know as of this recording we are both playing final fantasy 7 remake and those are towns baby right so like i don't care if i get lost in those and trials of mana eh. <laughs> dude rebirth's towns are crazy Holy oh, shit. Re- rebirth i'm sorry i said remake jesus christ <laughs> I meant to say, yeah we are not playing final fantasy 7 remake we're playing final 7 rebirth <laughs> that would um, be a little slightly out of touch yeah so yeah touch. we gotta experience the 2020 adventure in 2024 <laughs> yeah i imagine some people are yeah 
th- there's a there's a point I want to bring up, and in the original Trials of Mana, like you you play the origin story of your main character, which means like there's six origin stories because there's six characters, but that also means in that game that's the only one you see. So when you play through Duran, you get to see like oh you get to, you get to understand why he's like on his quest for revenge, or like if you're Charlotte, you can see why she's like trying to find her friend or like whatever. But in in remake, you actually get the opportunity to experience all of the origin stories of your three chosen members, which is actually extremely transformative because it's nice actually experiencing the whole background rather than just getting some like sepia tone flashback that lasts like a few seconds or like whatever. Right. So, um, but you yeah. don't even have to do this if you don't want to. And remake, it, it literally says, hey, this is optional. You can do this. Or you can skip it. And so it gives you the choice, which is great. That's amazing. Yeah. For anyone out there who is an Octopath Traveler person, it's akin to playing your character's chapter one. Yeah. You know, or especially when you come across a new person in Octopath Traveler 2, they you talk to them a bit and it's like, do you want to play their origin story? You can say yes or no. You don't have to do it. You know, yeah. so it's it's kind of the same thing in that. So yeah, they also make it a very very specific point, saying that oh, the items you acquire in like your other characters' origin stories don't impact like the main playthrough, like whatever. So you don't feel obliged to like try to like splunk around. It's purely for context, and that's like yeah. smart, man. That's like super smart. It's smart, and it makes it good for like successive playthroughs because it's like if you already know everyone's story, you don't necessarily want to do it again. No. You know what I mean? So like on this recent playthrough for this podcast, I didn't do them because I already saw, you know what I mean? I don't, yeah. I know that already. So yeah. Yeah. Give people the choice. <laughs> exactly. I love that you can jump and remake. I don't know why <laughs> in Ritual so Trials of Mana or really any other mana game, really. I don't think you can jump. You can jump in the remake of Trials of Mana, which oh is God. a lot of fun. I, I don't know why. <laughs> God, we could talk about this one all day if you wanted to but i gotta say to start things off so i, I did uh, i was very fortunate and i i did play uh, the pack story 19 demo of charles of mana's remake and so the only thing i kind of remember is that i was jumping on all the rooftops like an ass <laughs> well were you like were you like holy shit were you like holy shit i can jump or something or were you you know it was more like holy shit i'm able to actually like do this in town the the fact that there's actually like spaces to do that so it wasn't just the jumping it was the fact that like on jad and one of the very first like towns i could just like jump around like a crazy person like the fact that they give the opportunities to do that that was the crazy shit to me (laughs) yeah it's um it's fun there's a lot of fun traversal that can be had with that and it turns uh the aforementioned woods of wandara you do some actual like platforming sometimes there which is kind of weird yeah it's 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 fun there there seems to be a lot more stuff to pick up in this game like a lot of like a lot of treasure chests and the like little sparkles on the ground that's like oh here's an item or something like that yeah yeah, seems to be a lot more of that but which makes sense like if you're gonna have 3d space i think you need to have more stuff like that yeah, you're giving people things to do. And like in the original, there's not really too much of a reward for like spelunking. So like there's not any stuff on the ground. Like even Secret of Man has more stuff on the ground, right? But like to have Trials of Mana remake actually do this, I think that's actually extremely interesting because it gives a reason to like jump around and traverse and s- traverse and mess around these spaces, right? So for sure. I want you to answer something for me. Because I've had this question for years. I have never thought to ask anybody, including you. Okay. So here goes. In both remake and original, there are these spring pads that launch you way up in the air so high that it loads the world map and you get the mode seven zoom out. Oh, I'm so high up. Ooh, and then you go back down. Yeah. And then you land or crash or whatever, depending on the character. And then that's it. Nothing happens. That's literally <laughs> what are those there for? Uh, what what do they even do? They want to play a cute little sound as a bit of internal <laughs> humor in the office. <laughs> that, that's the, that's the only reason they just wanted to do their whoop, 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 yeah their, their <laughs> stupid like. <laughs> oh my god but what did they th- th- that always confused me it's like okay maybe i'll come back to this later i don't have any yeah. i mean i don't know why i just got launched up in the air for no reason i think the actual answer is flexing mode seven and flexing world building i think that's the actual answer i don't think there's any actual practical reason for it but but, but it doesn't do anything it just it's confusing and they don't say oh that was a weird 
trap or something like that, or you don't lose any HP or anything. It's just like nothing is even said. It's like, okay, I guess. Might be a good point to say, uh, might be a good time to say that, like, I like Kevin's landing animation in the original game. <laughs> it's great. He looks like a crazy person. Yeah, he lands like, on his feet. He's like, oh, <laughs> it's good. And, and, and then he flops over. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Duran just flops like belly flops or whatever. I think has. so. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I think they're flexing. That, that's all. That's all. But for no, <sighs> what reason? What to what end? I, uh, I don't know. All right. Which what, what do you prefer in this regard? Let's just talk, we talked about a lot here, but let's just say level layouts. Which, what do you prefer, original or remake? It's got to be remake. Yeah, I love wandering around. Um, And it, it's good being able to wander around and, and like, it, it actually helps you out in that regard because you might find some sparkly thingamabobas. And just the, in terms of the original layouts, you just don't really get that sort of a reward. And also another thing, the original game really feels like they want you to take one very specific path sometimes. It's yes. just really nitpicky and fiddly. It's easy to get lost because there's just one too many screens sometimes that look the same. And it's just like, okay, am I going this way or that? I've got turned around. In this last playthrough I did of original for this podcast, I got turned around so much more than I probably did in my other two playthroughs. It's so easy to get lost, though. Yeah, I feel like I just got luckier in those because in this one, I was like, holy shit, I'm back at the town again. How the fuck? It happened more than usual to me. And you know one thing about the original that's kind of a pain in the ass is that if you go the wrong way, it will actually block the exit and say trapped and then hit the fight. And then <laughs> after you, you beat him up and then it opens up and like, why the fuck was it closed in the first place? It makes some goddamn sense. <laughs> trapped. <laughs> trapped. It's like, well, I mean, you it's know, like, it's a typical you RPG. <laughs> it's a typical RPG thing of like, you know, whatever. Oh, do you like how um in the original, I guess you could do this in remake too. But like, if you open the chest and it turns into a mimic, you could just like leave. You don't actually <laughs> you have to. You like, can't. You don't have to fight it. Yeah, <laughs> you don't have to actually fight it. He's it's like, like, okay, eh, bye. Eh, <laughs> I don't I'm feel like trapped. it. I'm not trapped by you, sucker. <laughs> yeah, it's like I don't fucking care that much about whatever doodads in there. I just did it anyway. I always, I always like the fight them, but yeah, you can't just walk away. <laughs> in this last, in this last uh, game, I got, I got lost too much. Where I was like, you know, oh, I don't want to fight these. But yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is, I agree with you. I think remake wins here. Yeah. I don't always like markers in games that tell you exactly where to go, especially in RPGs, but I think it really is welcome in Trials of Mana Remake. It really is. I think it's one game where it does work, so I'll choose that. Yeah, and then literally, like, the only disadvantage to having those is that in in original, like, sometimes it puts a little bit of fear into you if you don't know exactly what's, like, upcoming or what the right direction is. So it's like, if you go off the beaten path, like, you could be like, oh, shit, right? But, like, that's literally it, and it's not that much. That's it. Benefit, yeah. (laughs) You're coasting with Fine Time. All right, let's talk combat, because this is an aspect of the game that is night and day. Oh, so different. Oh, they're so different. They're they're as different as possibly can be. So let's let's say this as a starting point. So unlike Zelda or Secret of Mana, for that matter, where enemies are just kind of there and you can either slash at them or walk past them or whatever. Trials of Mana, both original and remake, have it so when you come close to an enemy group, you draw your weapon from there and then enter battle mode. And then you fight and then you get like you won and then you get some results displayed or at least you do in a remake. So that's kind of had the flow of it. It's not as like I'm just walking around with my sword out. You're walking into a literal. OK, it is battle time or it is not battle time. Yeah. And did you think this was weird that like in in original you move like slower when you're in battle mode? Did you ever think that was like kind of strange? I didn't think that was strange. Hmm, okay. I thought that's fine. I mean, you are fighting them. I do. I don't think I want to be going like full tilt faster. And God damn, I just remembered in Secret of Mana, you get like when you press that dash button, you're moving, baby. <laughs> like you're. <laughs> yeah. Just like, sh- yeah. It, I loved how it was only one direction, too. So it's just like, <laughs> well, I've dashed in the straight line. It's time for me to catch my breath. 
<laughs> yeah, it's like you are moving. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't that happen here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, honestly, uh, I guess another question I've got is like, is the original game like a little too mashy for its own good? Because it can kind of like border on being that way, but I don't know if that's necessarily the case. <laughs> Is it mashy? Um, you know, I thought this question was unfair when you first put it in the notes. I I will admit, but honestly, it's it's pretty fucking mashy. I gotta <laughs> I gotta I gotta agree with you after because like after I did my playthrough of original games, like you know what, he's right. He's right, because the the wait and poke strategy from Secret of Mana and Secret of Evermore, for that matter, is gone when you just when you have to wait for the bar to fill up to 100 percent again to do any damage or whatever. That's gone. Yeah. So that aspect seems to be hidden in Trials of Mana, as I said, where like you will attack and then your character is in some sort of like cooldown animation before you can attack again. But there's no indication of that's happening. You just kind of have to feel out the combat and realize, oh, wait, I can't just mash the B button or whatever like I can in Zelda or something. Keep right. slashing. Yeah. You know, I can only do it every so often. And unlike um, Secret of Evermore or Secret of Mana, there's no penalty for pressing the button before your hidden percentage meter is full That's because your attack thing, yeah. yeah, your attack simply just won't come out. You're not going to do a weak attack. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if you haven't played Secret of Mana or Secret of Evermore before, that aspect of the game is probably poorly communicated to the player, meaning mashing. But hey, I know what's going on, and I'm still mashing, right? But hey, right, at least there's yeah. no more. At least there's no more asshole levels of hit stun. At least I can say that much. <laughs> so. Yeah, this that's the. I think that's a good. Um, I, I think that's a good plus. <laughs> Not getting stun locked. <laughs> so, one thing I think is really crazy about the original Trials of Mana is that it's coded in such a weird way. That the order of turns, if you will, obviously it's not a turn-based game, but still things happen in an order, right? And that order doesn't always display correctly. No. (laughs) Leading to a lot of confusion until you really understand what's going on. And I'm going to attempt to explain it to the audience. So here, I'm going to say it this way, okay? Then you have 100 HP, okay? Mm-hmm. I do an attack to you that does 200 HP. So that means you should be dead, right? Yes. But you're not dead because you're in the middle of casting a healing spell, let's say. Yeah. And that animation can't be interrupted, which supersedes me killing you. Right? Yes, so you're gonna animation. cast that yeah, you're gonna cast that spell that heals everybody, you and your allies, and it's going to show that you got healed for X amount of HP with those green numbers, but as soon as that happens, you're going to fall over dead. <laughs> Because I hit you for 200 HP when you're already at 100. So that heal that you just did doesn't matter. But people who don't understand what's going on being will be like, wait a second. I just healed myself. Why am I dead? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And that, it's, that's the oh. wild thing about the original Trial to Mana. The once, I mean, you, there's the three characters on screen. And if you have three or four other things you're fighting in this particular battle good luck man good luck i i can't keep up because the game doesn't display it correctly so yeah it feels like it gives the impression that things just kind of happen arbitrarily even though there is an internal logic albeit like a logic that doesn't really make the most apparent sense and uh yeah it, well i mean they just gotta show off those animations man that's what they gotta do <laughs> It's more so, you look stylish before you go down. <laughs> okay, okay, sure, yeah. It's just weird that, like, I don't know, just about in any other game, casting, it can always be interrupted by a physical attack. That just doesn't happen in Trials of Mana. They didn't code the interrupting part, yeah, or for whatever, whatever they did, yeah. You can be interrupted in Remake. You can. Yeah, you sure you can. Cannot, you sure can. Yeah, you, you cannot be interrupted in Original. So it's... Yeah. It's like Draconian. It's weird, yeah. Yeah, it's not like something that wasn't thought of in games, because I'm pretty sure Tales of Fantasia, you can be interrupted. You can be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So, like, I don't know, man. It's weird. But it's not just spells. There's a lot of things that display out of order. So, (laughs) I well, as far as combat and the remake goes, and I want to throw this at you. I think the best way to describe it is Dynasty Warriors. Yeah. Not that you're not that you're fighting that many 
people at once, obviously. Oh, but can like, you imagine the many rabbis. It's all be great. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, oh, mana. Warriors of mana. Holy shit. Ah, that'd be incredible. <laughs> warriors of mana, please. Um, so, yeah, you have these like very dynasty warriors combos, depending on how many times you press your light attack before you press your heavy one, known right. as the charge system in dynasty warriors. But I think generally applicable to anything that uses it. It's yeah, simple. It's effective. And it's fun. I really enjoyed the combat and remake. And once I found out it was that style, I was like, cool perfect i think it really fits especially because they like you don't have to necessarily know exactly like what combos lead to what but if you do like you can definitely attack in in uh, areas in, in specific ways that you want and like you can also even uh do things that like knock people back which is like really cool and yeah. uh so it gives a little bit of finesse in that regard right uh and you don't really think about that kind of stuff in the original because the original doesn't really have like a heavy attack button or like whatever no it's it's very different yeah so it's yeah. it's cool i really do like the way remake feels it makes a lot more sense for a 3d space to do that we mentioned jumping earlier so like now for flying enemies like the what are they called uh not antivisary uh what are they called the, the, oh, the flying uh, shit. uh, uh I almost had buzzy b and i know that's not it <laughs> i think they're called buzzy bees a secret of mana but oh are they okay I anyway so, those yeah. now you have to jump up there and hit them and do like an air combo you're right so it's like more active yeah. in this game yeah um yeah. The, the the way super attacks are handled between the two games are so different i don't even know how to maybe you can take this one because i don't yeah, think i know I how mean, to. so like fundamentally like in original you're building a gauge using your i guess you could say your regular attacks and then like once you do enough once you accumulate enough gauge you can then press another button to like unleash like a super so this is like simple enough but then once you start like changing your class you unlock more supers so like so your super bar basically like grows. So uh, if you do more and more normal attacks, you could do like a level two super. And then eventually you could do like a level three super, which requires more time to build up. So um, you would do these at, fa- at a fairly rapid pace, like especially like the level ones. You just keep firing them out over and over again if you want to. So that's just like the, the pace of combat in the original, which is like, you know, fairly consistent. But the one thing in remake is that you fill a percentage instead you have to like so like on paper it sounds kind of similar-ish because you're building a percent for your normal attacks but the one thing they change is that the percent takes quite a while to build up so you can't really use your your techniques nearly as often the, and, this um, percentage carries from battle to battle i think the thing in the original is that like it starts over every time because it builds so rapidly this percentage right. in remake you you carry along with you so it's like okay these guys are almost dead i I'm, it's not use it or lose it i can just take it to the next thing yeah that, that that is true but and also like to me the slower like use of supers is, it's actually kind of worth it because of how much damage they do and you really feel it when you're doing it on a on a boss because it'll cleave off like a decent percent of their, their like their life bar or whatever right? especially when they're staggered or whatever the state is called in right in, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah in remake right. yeah yeah but yeah, I, I like the approach to both. I don't think either one is better than the other. I like both of them, honestly. Yeah. So They're just two different strokes, yeah. We talked about the fact that it was really smart that they retained the ring system in Trials of Mana, the original. But the remake also has the ring system. That's not the type of thing you usually see in a modern game you know what i mean i figured that would be the type of thing to go by the wayside but no it's still here it doesn't obviously it's a 3d game so it doesn't revolve around the character anymore it revolves around the character portraits at the bottom right but it's still basically the same thing and i'm so glad it's here i'm glad can can you imagine how ham-fisted it would have been to like make the camera pan to like make the rings go around the characters that would have been really annoying (laughs) (laughs) shoot you do now you're over charlotte and the ring is it's like oh the camera would be such a pain in the ass oh my god (laughs) you know I how in that. uh you know how in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth or Remake for that matter they do like super duper slow mo when you're yeah, like the selecting great. A, like <laughs> yeah they 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 probably could have done that for the ring system like super duper slow while you're choosing a thing but yeah. <laughs> I think I kind of <laughs> like it pause in this particular case anyway <laughs> even though I do like the slow mo <laughs> it's it's good that it's paused because that's also the great thing about especially in in Secret of Mana where you really need to think about some of those things a little more. You know, where it's like, okay, bring up this, bring up the thing. Okay, 
Should I heal them first? Should I cast a spell? Should I do the saber? Whatever, whatever, right? Like you need to think about those kind of things. And the game being completely paused with the ring system up is key to it. It's not just the ring system; it's the it's the freeze. So it's a, it's a tr- strategic shenanigans or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, thinking about because the game is kind of fundamentally about like choosing your characters, targeting your characters carefully. So like. You just want you want to make sure like you like you use magic on the right target or whatever it is. So. so there's a lot of things in remake that they added that are interesting that we don't want to get like too super into because it'll take all day. But um, before before in the original, you you'd put points into your stats when you level up and that would determine what kind of spells you get in yeah. the remake. You can see what they are. You can sh- you have a certain amount of juice, if you will, and then you can put them into whatever things you want. You could see what you're going to get before you put stats into it, which is great. I think that's really transformative because in the original, like if you weren't using like a guide, you wouldn't know how many stat points you wouldn't know how many like intelligence points you need to get a spell. And it's like, that's a pain in the ass, (laughs) man. I know I looked it up. Hell. Yeah, now they just tell you, and it's a whole system behind it. Yeah. Um, they don't have dex or dexterity as a stat anymore, which I guess is not really necessary because you're literally moving in the 3D space, <laughs> and it's like you can dodge and like stuff like that. So you, <laughs> I guess you don't really need to have that. Your dexterity is how well you press circle to dodge the red circles that'll punk <laughs> your ass. <laughs> oh, you need dexterity for that. Um, <laughs> I do like that your your uh, CPU teammates can now just like cast stuff and perform other like special moves on their own because before you would have to tell them to do that you would have to use the ring system for everything now sometimes they'll just do angela will just cast spells or whatever you know so it's a lot great change it's great it gives more character too yeah it does so which game has better combat which which trials of mana versus trials of mana here which game has better combat i'm gonna cop out first before you give your answer i like them both equally I think I like them both for completely different reasons. I think both are great. So it's <sighs> I can't really choose a winner in this instance. You know, like uh, it's it's so hard for me to say, but I think I got to barely give it to remake just just ever so slightly. However, there is something really nice feeling about the original because it's so immediate and it's, yeah. it's it's so like it's so brisk in a manner of speaking right but like uh the i I do like some of the additional bells and whistles and remake some of the additional moves i think that kind of like shakes things up in a sort of a fascinating interesting way um and i think just like maybe uh, breaking down a bit of the of the combat stance stuff to like some degree it like it feels like the transitions of remake are like a little faster between like navigation and combat it feels like those barriers aren't quite as like hand fisted right so i mean to, to me anyway so i mean that's why i like, kind of barely give it to remake but yeah okay i i can understand that and i feel like most people will feel the way you do um i just i just think there's something to the original trial of mana trial of mana the singular trial of the mana single, <laughs> the one character the one trial of mana there's something to trials of mana originals combat that i just I'm I'm drawn to it like a magnet. I I love it. I don't know why. I, I it's, it's hard for me to put into words. Dude, it's it's nice. It's 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 a good simple like way of you know. It's no it's no filler. It's like we said yeah. before it's in a way. All, yeah, all killer, so. no filler. Yeah. Fine. Okay, let's talk game balance a bit because this is very different not just between the two but both have their quirks especially original has its quirks in this regard oh god because grinding in the original game was a bitch i must say (laughs) it was a oh it was it was annoying like sometimes it's not a problem especially if you get lost like i did because I was well, I shit. I was like forty before I went to what you call the penultimate dungeon. I was level forty. That's wow. how much I got lost in this. Yeah, I, this is like one of the longest runs I ever took, just because I just couldn't fucking find my way this time. I don't know why. You know, It'll, previous. No, I can't blame you. I can't blame you. Yeah, pre- previous experience didn't really help me, just because it's like it's been so long. I'm not going to remember. But yeah. the thing about original is that the difficulty can wildly vary depending on which characters you pick. Yeah. Depending on your 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 makeup, 
it can get rough out there. It can be a very difficult game. It's never yeah. at any point an easy game, but it can you can make it a lot harder on yourself. I think one run I had was Duran, Angela, and Reese. And let me tell <laughs> you, I was in a world it. of pain. Oh, my God. Yeah, I uh, I often affectionately say that uh, the game is doable with any configuration, though, like, if you have Charlotte, she kind of breaks the game because of her healing. So, like, if you have a healer, it really, like, facilitates, like, staying alive, which is, you know, kind of important. So, uh, uh, but yeah. yeah, like, if you have a healer or, like, someone that can cast, like, elemental, like, uh, sabers on your team, it, like, makes it go so brisk, man. It's like, oh, baby. So we mentioned the turn order thing earlier that was fucked up in the original, but the, (laughs) but the programming in general in that game is fucked up. So like, so (laughs) here's, here's the thing that, and I didn't understand this the entirety of my original run back in the day on emulator, right? Sometimes when you die, the game can display that you have one HP, even though you really have zero HP or vice versa. It's weird. It can, it, and sometimes even it can flip between one and zero, yes, like for a, a few times. And it's like, okay, am I alive or not? I don't understand why that happens from a programming yeah. angle, but it really, like, what did you? Can you remember what you thought at the time? Like, did you think that was you so know, weird? Or I thought it was so unlike other games and was kind of sloppy. Because, like, well, I mean, if you compare it to Secret of Mana, uh, 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 you just like die in that game, right? You're just like dead. <laughs> Yeah, you no fluctuation, no guessing. You're just like stun locked to death, right? So like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, but yeah, like the so the flickering is so strange, and I'm like, it's like, am I dead? Am I not dead? Now here's the the best part. Sometimes if you toss a healing item to a to a teammate specifically to one of the CPU teammates in original, you can actually like revive, like fake revive them from the brink of death if you toss a healing item in time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, if it lets you, then you can because like sometimes it's like I pick the cup of wishes first. That's the revive item in in mana. And I pick that first and to see if I can select them with it because it won't let you do it if someone's not actually dead. Yeah. But if they do if it, if you can't actually pick it, it's like, okay, I'll just use that. But if I can still throw a chocolate at them or something, I will try it. I mean, that's how you save off death, right? Yeah, just, yeah. Just- it's it. <laughs> It's so weird. Okay, so here's here's some really – some wacky thing always happens every single run, and this is what happened my last run. So I was on the ghost ship, and a zombie, just a basic bitch zombie, took Charlotte down to 1 HP, right? And it said yeah. 1 HP. It didn't flicker between 0 and 1. It said 1 HP. Then the zombie died. And then it gave me like the U1 and then the shopkeeper appears because you have to kill the enemies to make the shopkeeper appear. The shopkeeper said, welcome. And then two seconds later, Charlotte died. Well, OK, so one, I've never seen that. But uh, two, I can believe it. Three, clearly the uh, the payment for the shopkeeper services was her life. <laughs> <laughs> Charlotte must die so you can buy more, uh, you know, bear claws or whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever it was. Yes, yeah, it was. It was insane. It's thing. like I killed, but it never said zero. That was the thing. And it, it said one the whole time. It didn't. Oh. flick. It just said one. She died. With so one. that's why I'm surprised that she just fell over dead. Anyway, shit like that can happen. Um, the original has extremely laggy menus. <laughs> you, I was listening in on your recent playthrough of original. Every single time you went to the menu, you got like super tilted. <laughs> it's so slow. It was slower when we played it on emulator back in the day. It took like sometimes several seconds. I yeah. feel like M2 cleaned it up a little bit. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. It's pretty similar to what I remember, but however, I feel like M2 probably could have cleaned it up if they had sh- so well, chosen they clean to. Up, but. They clean up fucking everything if they want they to, do. right? Yeah, so they, they, they I'm sure to. Square just said, ah, pour it on or whatever. But. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the, the board is <laughs> Yeah, <do> it. <laughs> yeah, whatever. And then Konami was like, oh, no, you can make an arcade accurate uh, Gradius on TurboGrafx-16 Mini. Yeah, go ahead. Like, <laughs> um, But anyway, yeah, just getting to like – Oh my god, rearranging your items is so painful and original. Holy shit. I'm not usually the one to be that impatient and talk about how slow something is, especially if it's old. Because I'm like, okay, whatever, it's old. That's the way it was. But this yeah. is that's too much for me. You know the funny thing about the original menus is so I was doing a little bit of original original recently too. I feel like it eats inputs. Like if you're trying to it switch does. like your gear, yeah. So I have to press it like twice and maybe it'll like switch out the gear and then 
if I just press it once, it doesn't always work. I wait a good two seconds between button presses because it'll. Is that it. what it is? Okay, huh. I I do because it gets to it 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 gets confused. And, and you know the best part is that like so the original menu is actually like not a, a three by three grid. So if you try to move from section to section, it's you, when you press a direction, it like lags before it does it. It's like <laughs> it's like thinking thinking. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, it's like Jesus Christ. I'm glad that yeah. doesn't apply to the ring system or whatever in game. It's literally just like the the menus, like equipment and stuff like that and yeah, items. But like man, um, we alluded to this earlier, but critical hits do. Do not work in this game there's a bug in trials of mana original where like they just do not work you cannot do crits in trials of mana so if anyone remembers the old school like secret of mana rabbi got whacked or whatever the numbers Ted are big wrote. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the numbers whack, are whack, huge whack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that doesn't that does not happen in trials of mana at all because it cannot trigger and you know the weirdest part is that like you know it was meant to be there because uh certain moves watch certain spells actually boost critical hit rate but that rate will never actually go off because you'll just never see it and like there's like myths like of people claiming it can happen but i i didn't know if i could verify those across all my uh runs (laughs) i I don't know if i've seen one man yeah it just doesn't man this game would be a lot a lot easier if i could crit right i mean holy shit if we could do some real damage every once in a while not that you do shitty damage in this game but so it doesn't ruin the game or anything but like man to get out of a tight spot those crits really uh came in handy sometimes before but it works in remake though for my yeah it does work in remake remake does have critical hits well that was the thing back then about a lot of 8 and 16 bit rpgs where it's like a lot of especially older final fantasies there's stuff that just straight up does not work that's why like a lot of people got uh especially back in the day where it's like why would i be a mage when like i try to put someone to sleep and it never works or i try to do this and never works that's because it's not because the game's being an asshole on purpose it there's bugs it just got it programmed fucked up and it just yeah the programming's fucked up yeah yeah my my favorite example not to get too off the rails is i think like magic evade and final fantasy 6 doesn't do anything because like evade does it both for physical and magical i think it's what it is it's just like something oh, really man. fucked up <laughs> maybe they fix man. it in pixel remaster but in, in the original no there, there yeah there's like certain equipment and stuff in like final fantasy that just straight up like lowers your stats even though it says they're higher it's it's crazy there's stuff that just straight up doesn't work and trials of mana is no different you know that's just yeah, how it exactly. was sometimes back then yeah it just comes with the territory but yeah, so there's a lot of programming quirks in the original, but that are not so much the case anymore in remake. And that's that's good, obviously. Um, right. I love the class up system in both games. But before we talk about it a little bit, can I say how weird and super duper video gamey it is that like the game talks about changing your class as like an actual <laughs> in universe thing. It's so funny. It's <laughs> because great. like because like usually games that have classes or jobs don't actually like talk about it in the story or anything. But Duran's story literally starts with him setting out on this quest. Like you said, his aunt gives him the sword. So he sets out into the world to change his class. <laughs> so he can beat some guy or whatever that's literally the point again like even okay and if you get him as a if he's like a secondary character in your game and you meet him he's like in a sepia tone flashback he's like well i'm on a quest to change my class or whatever it's (laughs) so so dumb it's slightly immersion breaking but you know what does happen is that clearly cloud in fallen fantasy 7 rebirth to beat sephiroth he's got to change his class Yes, he must change his class to, uh, you know, Grenadier or something like that. To, uh, <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, man. my favorite joke, though, is that the Priest of Light, who's like the, the helper dude in all the um, in the beginning of the game, uh, he literally tells Duran, you do not have enough experience to achieve that feat, which is literal because you need experience to change your class. It's so weird that it's like part of the story and it's even weirder in a remake with the voice acting because they say it out loud. I need to change my class. It makes it even worse somehow. I don't know why. (laughs) 
Do you like when you go up to the statues and the and fairies all like trying to change your class? <laughs> like, who, who was changing? Who was switching classes? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's pretty good. Oh, it's funny. It's great. So something that I honestly would have never thought of in remake versus original is that remake has completely different level scaling. Yeah, the level skills are interestingly different. I didn't necessarily think this was net something they had to do but so you class change at specific levels uh but uh in remake 18, you get level 18 and level 38 right in the yeah, original level 18 38 so um in, in the original like you're you're going to class change after a fair amount through the game like and it, it, it takes um during your quest for the eight elementals that'll put you at about like the the fifth ish give or take elemental but the, the remake is like fuck it so like uh, you get level so much <laughs> faster and like by the time you get the third elemental you can like class change already and i'm like wait what it's like why would you like boost it to that degree i actually do appreciate this because it lets you play around with the first class change a lot faster but at the same time and, and by extension that also means like the second class change also comes earlier in the run as well so you have more time to play around with it you don't just bring it into the final dungeon like you do an original but so I, I actually appreciate the fact that they accelerated it it's just kind of feels weird right so it's like i guess like the idea is like get you more empowered faster question mark but um yeah I guess. I, I guess, I guess, but it's like, I honestly never thought about this aspect of remake until you mentioned it to me. I honestly yeah. just didn't think about it. Yeah, I, I think, well, but the reason for that is because, like, I've done, like, multiple original runs to the point where, like, the timing just, like, cemented in my head, right? So sure, when you sure. deviate from that, it's going to feel weird. Here's the funny thing, though. So, like, uh, there's a part of the game where... Uh, the the hero king uh <laughs> these names are so 90s what the fuck uh, the hero <laughs> king's like uh when you go to this specific area make sure you change your class before you go there <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> bitch i did that like hours ago what the hell are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> but they, yeah they probably you know when they were doing the new script they probably could have left that one out and just changed that to something else i mean probably but yeah, so, yeah. But, I mean, you know why it happened because they're using the same script but at the same time it's yes. like i mean come on man like i i did that a long time ago and the game has all these tutorials it's like here's when you change your class this is how you can change your class this is how you can do all the yada 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 these are the requirements to change your class so it's like i'm not gonna miss it <laughs> yeah and th that's good because the original trials of mana does not tell you shit including to get your to get your third class you need these question mark seeds and you gotta farm them shit you can't just find them lying around like you can in remake in original you gotta farm them fucking things and that's another thing that took me so long in my my current playthrough too of original is that i could not get the right things and i couldn't save scum them for some reason <laughs> you, you, you tried though you tried to save yeah scum I, them, I tried i was actually I was like can't you save scum these i thought you could just wasn't working i had to do everything legit so in, in many of my original runs i would just beat the crap out of tomato people and that sounds weird out of context until they drop the seeds i wanted <laughs> and then just plant them all back to back and inevitably get three of the same goddamn item or whatever right so <laughs> yeah yeah it's just it was just we i don't know man um they could i don't know they could i was gonna say maybe they updated the programming of that particular stuff but why would they change it that doesn't make any sense yeah i don't think so but the good part about remake is that like they actually give you question mark seeds for like freeze as you're exploring stuff so it's like it, it, it yeah. really like i mean we, i often use that word streamline and it kind of can come across a little weird but it really does like streamline the process in this case so it's like in this case i do appreciate it that you don't have to especially like i said original doesn't tell you anything you better hop on game faqs or whatever like you you know like you're not gonna figure <laughs> it out that's yeah. what I did. I think I, I think I I think I asked you, honestly. I'm yeah, pretty sure I asked you. Pretty sure you did, yeah. God, um, how long have we been married? Holy shit. So <laughs> to me, I think it's pretty clear that remake is an easier version of Trials of Mana, but yeah. remake is not exactly like a pushover. It's still going to challenge you. Maybe in retrospect, most of the challenge in the original is due to some assholery, like like unavoidable screen filling attacks to you and yeah, stuff. So it's like screen text. Yeah. yeah, you have to you have to take the hit. And, but like and and remake doesn't have anything like that. 
but I, that doesn't mean I think the original is busted or like super unfair or anything. I always like the challenge either way, but still being balanced is better than not being balanced. And I'll, I'll choose remake. Yeah. I, 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 again, I don't necessarily mind getting wrecked by full screen stuff as much in the original either, but yeah, I got to go with remake on this one because, um, if a boss is charging up his laser or whatever it is, right? Like you always know when that's going to happen. Um, and so like, uh, there's a bit more player agency in, and it, it remake and you just don't really you feel like you have a you have greater control over like over things right and uh again just like the the rescaling like g- gets you feeling pretty powerful pretty fast i mean that's almost like an that's just a different feeling from original in a way fine time fine time Let's let's reverse this one. We're going to talk about music now. Let's reverse our order here and let's put the big question up front. Which soundtrack do you like more? Let's just start there. The original. The original. <laughs> okay. That was fast. <laughs> sure. Well, let's hear it. I mean, that Okay, here's my thoughts. To me it's a wash. I think they're both See, you know what? I'm I'm lying already. I think I might actually prefer original. Oh, okay, well, here's why I feel that way. So I've talked about this before. Hiroki Kikuta's sample work on the original Trials of Mana and Secret of Mana, for that matter, the best Super Nintendo music there is. Yeah. The most impressive sample work maybe I've heard from that kind of sound chip. It is incredible all those little fussy drum sounds and percussion and loops and whatever like all of it's incredible and they still sound incredible today they do and remake lets you change the music to original if you want and the difference really isn't there like yeah they're keeping the spirit of the original but perhaps it's to a fault i think the problem is that the instrument choices in remake largely mimic the original they're too scared they're too scared to do anything. And I think what I probably would have wanted is more of a reimagining like, you know, CD ROM red book soundtracks of old. It's like, okay, we're going to port this arcade game to turbo graphic CD. Let's make a crazy good new soundtrack based on that. I think that's yeah. the kind of thing I wanted. And that's not what this is at all. Nope. It really isn't. I do like that mechanical sampled feel of original because I like that synthesized sequenced feel to it. So maybe I'm just contradicting myself. Maybe I do like original more. Yeah, but that, that sequence feel is gone. It's, it gets largely replaced by this much softer, like sounding soundscape. And like, it's just not always as impactful and honestly. And the, the, those punchy percussion like instruments in in the original those are those are forever like ingrained in my brain and nothing even comes close to that in the remake not in tr- like the percussion just is largely a wash i mean it doesn't sound bad obviously but there were some points where i actually had to like like sit there and listen and i'm like yo am i listening to original am i listening to remake and that's not good if you have to like wonder that right and one particular example that sticks out my mind is the snow song uh, another winter like it almost sounds identical like in a, in a vacuum you'd never know which one you're listening to I, I i dare anyone to tell me the difference between the two versions of oh i'm a flamelit or something right like yeah, i don't there's, it's so safe it's way too yeah. safe and um it's unfortunate one song i do think fares better in remake is secret of mana yes there is a song called secret of mana (laughs) because he thought it was funny (laughs) he thought it was hilarious um because well that is funny to a japanese audience right just naming a song secret of mana i mean that's funny to us but that's not called that there so (laughs) it's it's funny the (laughs) remake is called second then sets it to secret of mana over there (laughs) it is it is, yeah. The subtitle is "Secret of Mana." Oh yeah. wow, I didn't know they. I didn't know they called it that there. That's yeah, just like the remake of Sega Genesis Three: Charles of Mana. Yeah, <laughs> really, I didn't know they. I didn't know they called it that there either. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of like um, our collection, like what is it called? Like collection of saga, Final Fantasy, Legend, or something. Yeah, like that? well, you like, gotta what? you gotta do it though. You have to do that. Yeah, because it's so rebranded. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
We just got done saying the music is the best part of Trials of Mana. The bosses might also be <laughs> like up there as well because mm -hmm. the boss encounters in Trials of Mana are crazy good. Again, mm -hmm. I keep saying best on Super Nintendo, but honestly, it's true. They're probably the best boss encounters I've ever seen on that system. Yeah. So the original Trials of Mana relies on these like very carefully crafted looking graphics built for that specific boss room and that scene. And I, I hate to use this term because I think it's overused, but it really does have like a cinematic craft to it. Yeah. It really looks like a stage almost. It looks like here is this perfect place for this battle, you yeah. know, and I love that they do that. And, and honestly, like I said, some of my favorite encounters ever – that ghost ship, it, it does like the 2D, like single plane side on thing when you fight that ghost. Incredible. Yeah. I don't know the name of this boss, but we affectionately call him Moon Furry because you find him on top <laughs> I mean, of the. That's what they are. <laughs> you fight him on top of the Chart Moon Tower. That shit's crazy. It's a giant werewolf that you fight on top. Oh my god, that looks amazing. The wall yeah. boss. I love the wall boss. I think the wall boss is where it plays Secret of Mana. The song. Secret I think so. Of Mana. Yeah. <laughs> I think the Moon Furry's on the back of the Super Famicom box as a random aside. So they were proud of that it? one. I'm pretty, I'm pretty <laughs> <Okay>. sure. <laughs> um, I love the. I don't know what they're actually called, but I call them the astral heads the yeah, like yeah i know what you're talking about <laughs> the the cosmic like two heads and then there's like the maybe the big one appears in the middle yeah that boss is Such crazy so unique yeah that is insane yeah. like all that stuff is so crazy and like i said they all set the perfect stage for them but my favorite one is when you fight don guard this it's like this hydra boss but you fight him in midair on the back of Flammy. It's the, the 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 dragon. If you've ever played Secret of Mana, the thing you fly from place to place. You're Man. on top of Flammy, and while you fight this boss, and it actually does perspective switching. It so does. you start you start from fighting him from the from the view he's in front of you, and then it flies through the clouds so it can switch, and then all of a sudden you see Flammy in a big sprite in a side view, and then you're fighting the boss from a side view as well. They made like different sprites for this. Holy yeah. shit, 32 megabits of, <laughs> of storage. Taking advantage of that space. Dude, it's it's so good. They're really so memorable, right? And uh, not to really beat a dead horse, but to beat a dead horse, it, it really stands in stark contrast with Secret of Mana because, like, the very first boss of Secret of Mana is, like, the Mantis Ant. They don't take up a lot of the screen. I mean, I guess they're fine for what they are. The first boss of Charles of Mana is, like, Full Metal Hugger. It's like this giant, like, uh, crab. They take up the entire screen. The entire yep. screen, the, their presence is unmistakable, and they command that sort of presence on screen. And it's it's great. It pushes the system to the limit. And what a way to like ring in your very first boss encounter in that game. It's just like the whole thing moves around, and it's just like uh, the, the, it like blinks and stuff too. And just like yeah. that will always blow me away. Like absolutely, it's it's crazy. I I also want to add to that when I first played the game in two thousand three on the emulator. I remembered that boss from the magazines because yeah, I saw that okay. screenshot. Mm -hmm. and, and then when it came up in the game, it's like, oh, yeah, that thing. So I remembered it just from a fucking EGN or whatever I saw you back in the day. It was, the game. it was, yeah, I didn't even have to play the game. It was that memorable. So, yeah, yeah. I totally, I totally get you. Yeah, the, it stands out a lot more than a uh, random mech knights. <laughs> I don't mind if he's going to the <laughs> mech riders. Oh my. I, I don't know riders. why I was. I don't <laughs> mock rider. I don't know why I was dunk on the mech knight. I really don't. Maybe that's just the one I was like the most sick of seeing or something. <laughs> but it's, a, just, it's a dunkable one. It's dunkable. <laughs> don't you have to fight two? Don't you have to fight two at once? Is that I a thing? Think so yeah, I think so. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that game. So as we just established, original Trials of Mana, best in class bosses, and I'll be blunt, it's just not the same in remake. It mm -hmm. isn't. And it's and I but I want to stress it's not because boss encounters in remake are bad because they're actually really, really great. It's just that the ones in original, like I said, best of all time, it's an unattainable high bar that remake just cannot match, at least not with that budget. Right. So like, <laughs> the budget could have done it. I mean, look, I mean, Take some seven remake funds. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, you look at them seven Final Fantasy seven rebirth bosses right now that we're playing through Woo! right now. You, you, you tell me, right? I mean, Woo! with, the, with, with enough God. money, you can. Anyway. Maybe for Visions of Mana, they can make it a. Like <laughs> oh, a that, will never, that, that game has a 20th of the budget of Final <laughs> Fantasy seven rebirth. Yeah. No chance. No chance. Yeah. So. 
yeah, again, it's not really remake's fault. It's just up against something that it just can't hope to match. With that said, the look of the bosses in remake are pretty fucking superb. As you just said about that crab boss, a uh, full metal hugger, that looks crazy good in remake. It looks it really good in remake. It does. The, I think. I think so. Yeah, I think the look is there. So, like again, like the way they translate the designs, just like with the playable characters, it they 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 capture the feel of the designs, but the presence on screen. I think that's the big thing to me because, like, it's sort of like you said, they didn't really like like the original like uh, environments are very carefully uh, set up in a way to c- communicate like the sort of like cinematic skill. They don't really do fit those things together quite as well in, in remake because like the, the yeah. full hugger is big they just don't have the same sort of like commanding presence on screen i don't think i mean it looks cool you, and you it, like, can't yeah you can't have that simply because you can move the camera you yeah you just can't the, have that thing. in a 3d game you yeah. can't I agree. it just well there's no way it can be the same Right. So, you know, you can do other stuff better, like the wall boss, I think, comes out better, I you know, so but, too, like, yeah. but like, but like Moon Furry, I just, you just can't, you, it just, you just can't do it, you know, it just doesn't work. The ghost ship boss, you just doesn't work, you know? That one actually translates like, okay, just in terms of verticality, but yeah, like, just, again, it just goes back to presence, like that Moon Furry, it's like, if you can tilt that camera away from them, they just become like a random object, they're not like actually like dominating half the screen right so it's like yeah it just doesn't and by by the way when i say it doesn't work i just mean doesn't work as well as original which exactly. again yeah, is yeah, impossible yeah. to they do yeah, work in the context of the game and they're they're a lot of fun so i don't yeah. want to say like they suck or anything it's just you know they kind of take around the bosses in some way so they move around a bit differently and remake compared to like their like the original but just yeah it's just not quite as impressive i think Definitely in a general not. sense um, what I do like about Remake, and this is a, obviously be, it brings a much different flavor, as I said, there's no more, you know, unavoidable like screen feeling attacks or whatever like original. So Remake does like the more, I guess, like MMOs and stuff popularize this. I yeah. was thinking like Final <laughs> Fantasy 14, but yeah. like there's a lot of like like stuff on the ground like you can see aoe's or line attacks or whatever oh yeah. they're about to attack this way or oh they're about to do an explosion here yeah. or whatever so that that stuff you could see coming and you can dodge except your dumbass cpu teammates oh, don't fucking they just it. they just yeah they just fucking stand there half oh, the time like, okay. wrecked. you know what really pisses me off so there's one mechanic in remake where it's like the boss is charging up to do something, but you could prevent them by doing a bunch of damage to them or killing their three doodads around or whatever you can do yeah. to stop their attack. But your you teammates can. don't fucking help you. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You can. We can. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, the teammates just like, help me fucking swing your damn sword. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't you see me hitting this one? Go over here, there and hit that one. God damn it. Like, Jesus nah, Christ. Kevin wants to eat chips. <laughs> it's like well, just fucking help me with this it's, it almost feels like it's hard it's a more laborious effort to break the aoe shenanigans than it needs to be yeah for sure i mean it's fun i like the mechanic but um yeah but yeah is there any bosses you, you want to mention before we move on here i think we kind of yeah um so i don't want to spoil anything but one of the final bosses was translated pretty interestingly in the fact that they actually have like uh, they, they actually can like move around whereas before like in the in the um in original which, they're a lot more static. Uh, which path which would what, what does it happen in which who's yeah it's path? the duran angela boss so the oh, okay path. okay say say no more yeah i know which one yeah, yeah. so like uh it, they're kind of like a little ghetto in some regards in the original but like they they, they redid the whole fight in in remake so that's that's interesting now that, that one still that stands out to me a lot yeah and some of the some of the bosses that fly around like the the fire benevolent, like that, that that's kind of cool, but you know, in general speaking, I mean, they're, they're fine. Fine time, fine time. I'm, I'm sick. I'm, I'm, I'm sick. Oh, what? I'm, I'm sick. Head deadly. I'm sick. I'm, I'm sick. I'm, 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 I'm sick. So there's some stuff that's only in remake, and we just kind of wanted to talk about that stuff here. We have mentioned voice acting here and there that does exist in this game. Oh, that that script is is fully voiced. Well, I mean, it, it cut scenes anyway, like actual scenes, not every NPC and stuff like that. 
but yeah, so that's interesting. I, the voice acting is, is, you know, you're just going to have to hear it for yourself. I don't think we can really describe it here. It's not bad. It's just very, it's a very interesting take on things. I think that's all we can say. <laughs> yeah. It, there's some cheese factor to it that you'll just have to experience for yourself as best. But listen I, to. I, I, we think it's good. The, 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 the good kind of cheesy, but you know, yes. uh, but yeah, the, you, um, you had some other notes about voices though. I really like context sensitive voice samples in games because they kind of like add character without halting the flow of events. So you don't have to like have a text box necessarily. So like um, in some cases, like uh, uh, there's one particular scene where like if Hawkeye restart in your party, when you're like in Laurent, like one of the castles, he will actually apologize on behalf of his people to Reese. Like, after, like, a fight, he'll just, like, say it, right? And, and, like, yo, dude, like, the fact that they actually, like, record, they they made this and they recorded it and they implemented it for this very specific situation, most players might not even necessarily hear it, right? And, Mm -hmm. like, the the, the actual, like, love and craft thereof, that's actually extremely impressive to me. And like it's 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 easy to miss. It's just like a throwaway line. It's like I'm I'm sorry that the noble thieves did this to your to your uh, to your people. And it's like wait what? And like that that's really really cool to me. One thing I like is that like your teammates can just kind of like when you're doing a town thing, they're also in town and you could just like talk to them. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's stuff. So good. Yeah, I, I like that. Yeah, there's more. That's what they the stuff that they added was like character stuff. They realized that was the important part. And Charles and Amanda's characters are one of the most notable elements, so it makes sense. And yeah, those lines were added to remake, even though the large, like most of the script is like shared. But like those little additions, they're they're just like great, man. I love it. I did think it was interesting that they added like a collectible to the game. There's like what are they called? Little cactus. <laughs> I don't. I, I think I only caught like I don't know ten of them. I think there's fifty though in the game now in remake. Yeah. They're all over the place, but it's like if I only caught – again, I didn't do too much spelunking, but the fact that I only saw 10 means these things must be really hidden. Yeah, so uh, uh, in my my first remake run, I actually did like spelunk around and like chase these things down, but they're like uh, – when you click like a certain like threshold – uh, when you meet a certain threshold, they'll like give you like bonuses, but they're like little subtle buffs. It's like you get a discount in shops, or like you can get some like a uh, some like ability buffs, or like random things here and there. So it's like you don't need to do it, but like the the, the places that they put them in are always like really really funny to me. Like uh, in the sort of like molten lava ish area, they'll just be like chilling on a platform, and I'm like, what the hell? Like, like what are you doing here, man? <laughs> <laughs> like you're gonna you're gonna like uh, you're gonna dry out. Like what are you? <laughs> it's so that's i don't know man the cat yeah, the cactus I, don't cur he wants to be on the <laughs> whatever no just just hang out in the corner of the evil castle like well it's the worst that could happen it's like you the might not evil get castle. water or nothing <laughs> are, are, there evil e- castle. are the evil ninjas in the evil castle yeah they are <laughs> hang out with the not so evil cactus <laughs> okay not so evil little cactus yeah um, but uh, there I, is I a bloodlet no say it say it no, I, I just I just love how they they did this because I think it, again like they they didn't just translate the original game they added like the fact that they actually like gave you an incentive to explore it's great. <laughs> well, one thing they also add to remake is there is a post game scenario which we don't really want to talk about because obviously we don't want to spoil. But you 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 can load your save after you beat the game and you can do this extra scenario that takes maybe like four ish hours to do. I would yeah, say that's what I would say. Yeah. Um, but what did you think of this mode? Because like I I like the extra story content that was cool. You know, that was unexpected, really. I didn't really expect anything like that. But right. I didn't really like playing through it that much. I thought it was just a bit too long for what it was. And for, for Dragon Ball Z fans out there, let's just say it was like the snake way of scenarios. <laughs> so I just I just thought it was a bit much. But, you know, it's fine for an extra. And I'm, I'm glad it was there just for the character stuff, honestly. Yeah, the character stuff is the biggest thing. Obviously, not going to say specifics, but that's the most memorable thing to me. Uh, but the actual like d- like dungeon esque part, I mean, that's not particularly memorable. But on the flip side, can we really expect like too much for like an added scenario? I guess. But and the story thereof is kind of trashy. But I mean, <laughs> kind of not written the best. But you know, it's worth it for for some cool interactions, I guess. But. <laughs> It's, it's rather ham. It's rather ham-fisted in terms of how they like put it into the game, but 
a like the original game doesn't even have like a post game or anything. So I guess, I guess it's fine. But. Yeah, it's fine for what it is. I didn't I didn't hate it. I didn't like it that much, but I definitely didn't hate it. And like I said, I really did appreciate the character stuff. So that's good. Yeah. So yeah, I guess that's shit. I think we're that's it on Trials of Mana. But before we go, just real quick, I want to talk about our expectations for Visions of Mana just because we can concrete it here and if we're wrong, we're wrong. <laughs> Everyone will hear how wrong we are forever. So I'm confident. <laughs> yeah, when we when they first showed it, uh it was a state of play, right? Where they first showed it? Uh, the Game Awards. Game Awards. Game Awards. I thought, okay, since this is coming out for PS4 and Switch, it has to be the same engine as Trials of Mana Remake, right? It has to be. Well, it's not like you could put Unreal Engine 5 on a Switch, so... uh (laughs) (laughs) I mean... You could try. Well, I don't know. Switch 2 could be out by, I don't know. They did say Switch, though. So who Yeah, it, it, it's going to be hamstrung by last jet, unfortunately. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it has to be bad or anything. But that's of course the not case. Right. Um, but outside of that, I don't know if you really have any expectations of Vision of Mana. I just hope they are just not embarrassing. <laughs> you know, like we said earlier, the last great mana game was Trials of Mana almost 30 years ago. So I I hope Visions of Mana can just be great without all the bullshit. We've lived our entire adult lives without a great new Mana game. And I really, really hope that changes this year. Well, for I, for one, want to play exactly like Dawn of Mana. I want the barrels to float and balance around like rubber objects. And if they don't Shut bounce the around... Fuck. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> no, my expectations are super lofty, man. Like that <laughs> art during <laughs> that art during the game awards, when I saw it, we, we were like watching it as a small group, and I, I was like I instantly said it was like mana. And like I, I was blown away by those sunsets. It was such a luminous looking game, way more luminous than what we've seen from trials, and way more luminous than like anything we've ever seen. That was such a superlative superlative looking game. And like the way the They've like translated those established concepts to like a new game. They just they're breathtaking. They're nothing short of breathtaking. And like one thing I often like to say is that you can often sense the confidence of a new project through their marketing. You know if something's a good idea. Street Fighter 6 versus Street Fighter 5. Tekken 8 versus Tekken 7. I'm sorry about the fighting game references, but like they're those yeah, sure. newer games are very clearly communicated. And I feel Visions of Mana is the same way. It's just like you, you can sense that confidence through all the marketing materials. They're even doing like, hey, like here, here's like a good like the good dog. Here's a good dog or whatever. Right? They're already like playing into these sorts of things. And like it, it just like s- speaks to the, the the development of this game that they, they feel like they got something incubating. And they feel like they got something cooking. It's not like some ghetto ass like mobile game. Right. So, yeah, they 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 know what they're doing here. They know what they're yeah. doing. Trials of Mana gave them the confidence. It's like, OK, we don't have to worry about character scenario story or anything that's already made for us because that already exists. We can just concentrate on crafting a world and battle system and stuff that works. And now that they have that, they can make they can go forth and make like an actual new thing. Yeah, and like even during the Xbox showcase, which would have been the last place where we would have expected footage, by the way, uh, they're all talking <laughs> about like the soundtrack. They're like, yo, we got like a gazillion million tracks, not literally like a gazillion million, but they got all these tracks. And like it's it it's just speaks to like how much t- like time and energy and effort that they're putting into this game. And maybe it won't have as much money as like a Final Fantasy seven rebirth or whatever. But that art direction is strong, man. It's so strong. It's very strong and it looks great and I hope it is great. So yeah, uh, thanks for joining me. Trials of Mana, great game, original and remake. Everyone out there playing both, they're both worthy. Can't pick one, (laughs) but uh, we pitted them against them again for podcast content. But yeah, we're not going to pick a winner (laughs) because both should be played. They should be. Thanks for letting me float in from the Mana Sanctuary. All right. Put your plastic bag uh, fucking hand away of your uh, wispy pal, and then uh, we can get out of here. Catch us on Fine Time Podcast on Twitter or check the description of this podcast to find our names on Blue Sky. See you next time. Bye. You've been listening to 